Hello, my dear mineral brain learners. Have you ever heard that we only use 10% of our brain? I'm pretty sure yes, but is that affirmation correct? Let's find out in this video. At least for me, and I'm pretty sure you too, I have heard all my entire life that we only use 10% of our brain. But the truth is that we can easily prove this is fake. Yeah, guys, we've been living a lie all this time. Let's start proving all this is a lie. Some decades ago, Barry Beinstein, a neuroscientific, argued against this myth with only six proof. The first one is proof with brain injuries. Almost always, when a brain is injured, it implies brain deficits in different areas depending where the injury is located, such as cognitive deficit, control deficits, and so on. So, if we only use the 10% of our memory, when we receive brain injury, we shouldn't show such deficits. However, reality is far from this myth, and this is one proof we are using all our brain, not only the 10% of it. The second reason is evolution. Our brain uses a lot of oxygen and nutrients to work. If we only use the 10% of our brain and oxygen and nutrients aren't using on the other 90% of our brain because we don't use it, then by evolution, natural selection should eliminate inefficient brains. And nowadays, people should have small brains which would be supposed to be more efficient. However, nowadays we can find people with different brain sizes and we can see how despite the size, in the normal population, different brains work fine. The third reason against this myth is several imaging. In the last decades, non-invasive methods such as PET and FMRI have appeared which let us see inside our brain and what parts are working without opening it. And as you can imagine, with these methods we can see that all our brains present some kind of activity in every part. This means that if we only use the 10% of our brain, then we shouldn't see that the other 90% present activity, right? However, we only detect that a part of the brain remains without activity when it has a heavy injury. And almost always, this will have as a consequence a deficit in some brain functions, such as movement, speaking, etc. Also, in metabolic studies, we are using 2 dioxide D glucose as a radioactive label in the brain. If you only use 10% of our brain, then because the cells of the other 90% are inactive, should appear as a wet area in a brain radiography and the result doesn't occur. One more reason is the localization of function. For decades, investigators have been studying different parts of the brain which are related to different aspects of processing information and haven't found a single part of the brain which has any function. So this fact proves once more that in fact we are using more than that 10%. And another one reason against this is related to the microstructural analysis. In neuroscience, there is a technique which consists of inserting inside the brain a tiny electrode, and this electrode allows us to monitor the activity of a single cell. And fortunately, for those people who consider true that we only use 10% of our brain, nobody has found that 90% of our cells are unused by using this technique. The sixth reason is the synaptic planning. When a brain cell is not used, it tends to degenerate. In fact, this is highly common in humans between early childhood and the onset of poverty. So if we only use 10% of our brain, then the other 90%, because it is inactive and therefore degenerated according to synaptic planning, then autopsies would reveal a larger scale degeneration. But actually, the autopsy shows a healthy brain entirely and not degenerated. All this evidence is enough, at least for me, to prove we are not using only 10% of our brain. Instead, we are using more than that. So do you want to use more than that 10%? It's as easy as going for a stroll with a friend while having a chit chat or doing a sudoku while listening to Mozart's music. In the end, having a normal life, you are using more than that 10%. Even when you rest, your brain still is working. Then, if nowadays this myth is very extended, I say not only in the English-speaking countries or the West, but also in all the world, when this myth appeared and was interrogated by a lot of people. Well, a possible origin we can find it in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, when psychology did its first steps as a science. 
William James, an American psychologist, wrote popular articles offering advice to the general public. In one of these articles, James talked about how a person on average usually achieves only a small portion of her or his potential. Just passes and a generation of gurus follow the words of James, and at the beginning they said we only use the 10% of our capacity, but this affirmation ended up morphing on the 10% of our brain. And in 1936, a famous adventurer and journalist called Lowell Thomas attributed the 10% of the brain to William James in one of his books in 1936, which was one of the best-selling self-help books of all time, and since then it seems the myth has become more popular. But another possible explanation will be found in the scientific papers of early brain researches. For example, the early investigations, by calling a huge percentage of the cerebral hemisphere the cerebral cortex, perhaps they have placed the mistaken impression that that had not functioned. Perhaps there are more possible explanations about the origin of these myths, but also we can find urban legends which maintain these myths. For example, it is said that Einstein once said he was brilliant due to these myths. However, it seems this statement has never been said by Einstein. And even there are lots of books, TV series, and other entertainment media which maintain these myths, usually relating that if a person can use the other 90% of the brain, will have something cool, like having superpowers or be more intelligent. To finish this video, unfortunately for us, we won't be able to have superpowers by using more than the 10% of our brain, since this is fake, and always we are using more than that 10%, so the best conclusion we can extract from this is that we can be proud of how is our brain. We can feel emotions, we can have sensations, we can think logically, we can do more than one thing at the same time, etc. And this is awesome for itself. Perhaps one day we can connect our brain to technology and have superpowers such as fly or control objects with the mind, but in that case, we would be cyborgs, and not for the fact we are using neurons which before were sleeping or something like that. In any case, I hope this video has you to understand why this myth is fake. If the answer is yes, then please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. And now I want to read you. Are you disappointed in knowing this myth is fake? Is this myth popular in your country? Do you know some urban legend or entertainment media which you think maintains this myth? Let's start a discussion in the comments below, and I hope to see you in the next videos.